Do you know the difference between insert molding and two shot over molding? Hello, this is Gordon Stiles, the founder and CEO of Star Rapid. I've been involved in rapid prototyping and product development for, oh, I don't know, a very long time now. And I want to welcome you to another episode of Serious Engineering for Serious Engineers. Serious Engineering. There are a couple of ways that plastic injection molding can be used to combine two or more materials into a single part. How can this help a product developer? Let's take a closer look at the advantages of insert molding and over molding. What is insert molding? Insert molding means to place one component, the insert, onto a pin or other holding fixture inside of a plastic injection mold tool. When the mold closes, thermoplastic resin is then molded around the insert permanently sealing it into place. The insert is usually a small metal or plastic piece like a threaded screw fitting or an electrical contact. By the way, threaded fittings are also called nutserts. And no, we're not going to make a pun about that. Or are we? Using inserts in this way, especially for screw fittings, makes sense because it avoids the need for extra drilling and tapping which takes time and money. And inserts can also be used on thin-walled cases that otherwise wouldn't be thick enough to allow for a tapped hole. Most importantly though is the fact that insert mouldings work with conventional injection moulding machines so there's no need to invest in equipment upgrades. Are there any drawbacks to insert moulding? First, if they're installed by hand it slows down production time which in turn increases labour costs. Second, if holding strength is especially a concern, then the plastic case might need to be designed so that it locks the insert in place. And finally, it's possible that cracks can form around the insert due to stress. This is because the resin shrinks while the metal does not. This is especially a problem with polycarbonate plastic. As a general rule of thumb, hand-loaded inserts only make sense if the annual production volume is low, maybe up to 20 to 50,000. Above those kinds of annual volumes, it probably makes more sense to invest in automation. It's very common to have specialized end-of arm tooling for the robots on a plastic injection molding machine, picking up and inserting nutserts. Overmolding, also known as multiple material molding, two shot or 2K, which comes from the German Zwei Komponenten, is a type of plastic injection molding where a rubber or elastomer such as TPU or TPE is permanently overmolded onto a more rigid plastic substrate. Sometimes we even overmold rigid material over another rigid material just to get a two-tone effect, but this is less common, however. Okay, why do product developers use overmolding? Well, there are many potential advantages and applications. For example, overmolding can improve the appearance of many products. This is helped by the fact that the overmolded material doesn't need to be the same color as the substrate, but instead can be a contrasting or complementary color. You'll often find this on toothbrush handles, for example. Overmolding provides texture that improves the grip and feel for the user. This is common on power tools or cooking utensils. Overmolding can also reproduce a designer's logo or trademark image on the product. Functionally speaking, overmoldings offer electrical and thermal insulation and they make air and watertight seals for cases and the process can be used to encapsulate other components, holding them firmly in place to prevent mechanical vibration. How does overmolding work? Overmolding is done with a special injection molding machine that has two barrels. One barrel typically holds a rigid thermoplastic and the other one has some form of elastomer such as TPE, TPU or silicone. But it's not just the machine that's unique, so is the design of the mold. In a conventional mold tool, there might be one cavity and one core with the two halves together forming the final shape of the part. With overmolding, we typically have three halves to the mold tool. Three halves, I hear you say? You heard that right. And as you may have guessed, I didn't do too well in mathematics at school. The two main types of automatic overmolding process are known as shuttle molding and carousel molding. Both of these processes require three halves. The first two halves are the core and cavity that mold the substrate. This substrate remains on the core side of the mold. This half is shuttled or rotated around to meet up with a secondary cavity side. The mold is then closed and the overmolding material is injected into the gap between the substrate 
and the second enlarged cavity. With very low quantity molding, we will often just take two completely separate molds and hand transfer the substrate into the second mold for over molding. What are the main advantages of two shot molding? The main advantage of two shot molding is that the bond between the materials is very strong, often exceeding the sheer strength of the TPE. This is helped by the fact that both materials are still hot and, in the case of TPU, not fully cured yet when they're joined so that they're effectively glued together. Also, different shore hardnesses and colors can be mixed to achieve a variety of effects. And the process is largely automated, so it's ideal for large production runs. What are the drawbacks of two-shot molding? The design of over-molding mold tools is more complex, so it takes more time and costs more money. Also, dedicated equipment is necessary, although it is possible to add an auxiliary piggyback injection molding barrel to convert a conventional machine to a two-shot molding machine. The most important consideration, however, is to make sure that your choice of elastomer is compatible with the thermoplastic substrate. For example, nylon, peak, ABS and some other engineering grades can be difficult to form a good bond with. To deal with this, it's possible to use plasma surface preparation and other treatments to help improve bonding. And we'll talk about that in a few other videos. Remember. To get the best results, you need to work closely with your manufacturing partner in the early planning stages to optimize tool designs whilst also ensuring that you use the right materials and process parameters. Okay, that's all we have time for today. Remember to ring the bell, over like and over subscribe. We'll be back soon with another fascinating and fun-filled episode of Serious Engineering for Serious Engineers. Serious Engineering.